Let's start with adding items to the cart. So we're going to use Redis hashes to efficiently store cart items. We use Django views and DRF endpoints to handle add to cart actions so we can capture the request. And then we we'll associate cart data with session IDs to persist cart items for anonymous or logged in users. Let's create a new app for the cart. So let's go into our Django container. Let's run the manage Python manage.py start app. And uh, let's run, let's call this cart. So we created a new app for cart. So when we go back now, we should have a new cart app. Now navigate your way over to the cart view. So let's create a new class called add, add to cart view. Here we're going to be using Django REST Framework's API view, which gives us full control over how we handle HTTP requests. So we're going to create a new method. This is going to be the post method. Using the post method within the API view class, that's going to give us full control over how we receive, validate, process, and respond. Let's first capture whether the client sending the request has a session ID or not. So that would have been passed into this method via the request. So we can access the request data and then we can see in the request data whether a session key exists. If it does, we'll go ahead and capture that. If it doesn't, we'll go ahead and create a new session key. So my apologies, I've had to create this after the project was finished, but there was a slight mistake in how we created the session key or checked whether the session key exists. So we check whether the session key exists or not. If it doesn't, we create one. And of course, if it does exist, we then use the session key that has already been passed in by the client. So uh, do apologize there. That's the actual setup we need. Now, if you did miss this, then it doesn't matter as long as you're logged in to say the Django admin and you have a session key, the code would have worked already. Uh, but this is the actual code we want to set up to check whether the user has a session ID already in place. If they don't, then we'll go ahead and create one. So we are using a post endpoint or capturing post requests because the client is needing to actually send data for us to actually store in the cart. So because the client sends data in the post request, we use a serializer to handle it safely and effectively. So let's create a serializer file inside of our cart, serializer.py. And we create a basic serializer for the data that's going to be sent by the client to be stored in our cart. So that data includes the product ID, the name, the price, and the quantity. What we have to envision here is that the client is in their browser looking at our products in our store. They then go ahead and select a product to add to the cart. And when that happens, an API request is sent to our API to perform the action then to update our Redis cart. Now in this project, we aren't building a front end, but we do have an API and we are using Swagger to send messages to our API. So because the client is viewing the data on the page, we can make the assumption that the data is already on page. So it's just a case of collecting the right data and sending it across to the API. Now, because we're using Swagger, we're going to need to create that data ourselves. Right, so next we use the add to cart serializer to validate the incoming data. This ensures that the product information the client sends, ID name price quantity is complete and correctly formatted. Once validated, we can extract those values from the serializer. Once the data has been validated, we prepare the data ready to then add to our cart. So now we need to create a new module, redis underscore cart. And in here, let's define our Redis interactions. Feel free to refactor this to any approach that you want to take, as well as the view. I'm just trying to keep the code nice and simple. Right, so Redis has already been installed. It was one of our requirements. So first of all, let's import Redis. And now we need to think about actually connecting to our Redis server. So let's get back into our core settings. Uh, let's find the databases further down and just underneath the database, let's go ahead and set up our 
Redis configuration. Of course, you can change this and make it more secure, but here we have all the details related to our Redis host. Now, remember, we are running this in a container, so the host is going to be the name of the Redis service. The port, that's the default port that's open for us to communicate with Redis. We then can select the Redis default logical database in our Redis server instance. So that's Redis DB equals zero. We only have one database. And then finally, Redis decode response true. So when this option is set, Redis will decode binary byte responses into regular Python strings. So without it, when you get data from Redis, you'll get the top option here, raw bytes, and you would then need to process it. And then with decode responses true, you just get clean strings. So let's make sure that we have imported up the top here. Let's just get rid of this. Import Redis. Now remember, this is the cart key format, cart, colon, and then the session ID. We're going to be utilizing this in multiple functions. So let's create a helper function, which will generate a consistent Redis key for our user's cart. So at the top, create a new cart key function, which will return the correct format, cart, colon, and then the session ID. And we pass the session ID in. Right, so in our add to cart function, let's go ahead and capture and prepare the cart key. Then we can create our structured data object to represent the product being added to the cart. So we include all the essential fields the cart needs to track. By organizing the data this way, we can easily serialize it to JSON and store it in Redis as a single hash field. So this just makes retrieving and updating the cart data fast and consistent, even if the cart is shared across multiple devices or sessions. So that just leaves us now to actually create the data in our Redis database. Remember, hate set is the Redis command that sets a field value pair inside a hash. The Redis client settings, we pass that into Redis client. I'm going to change that just to R, just for simplicity. So R.hset, we set the cart key, the product ID, and the product data. So notice here we're using JSON dumps. Now remember, Redis is a key value store that only understands strings or bytes. So at the moment, product data is a Python dictionary, but Redis can't store it natively. If we try to pass it directly, Redis would raise an error or convert it in a way that we don't want. So we need to serialize it into a string, and that's exactly what JSON dump does. So do, of course, make sure you import JSON. So at this point, it's important to remember the behavior of hset, of creating hashes and updating hashes. So what happens when you call add to cart multiple times? So first of all, the cart key will stay the same. So it doesn't matter if we keep adding multiple items to our cart that has the same cart key, the cart key simply doesn't change. So when we add multiple items, what happens to the product ID? Well, it will simply just override the existing ID if it already exists. Now, if the product ID already exists, obviously it just overwrites. But if it's different, a new field is added to the Redis hash underneath the same cart key. So that's how the cart grows, one field per unique product. And that way, we ensure that all the associated products from the same user is kept under the same hash. So we first import Redis cart, and now we have access to all the methods, of which we only have one at the moment. So we go ahead and run add to cart and pass in the session ID, product ID, quantity name and price as required. And then what's going to happen at that point, of course, is that is going to create a new hash. And then once that's completed, we will then respond message added to cart status 200. Now, this was just really for show. Let's change this code now. We've got a general idea what's going on there. So data equals serialize of validated data. So we then serialize the data. We then go ahead and access that data and then prepare it for then for us to add to cart. So let's try this out. Let's go over to our URLs, which we haven't created yet. So URLs.py. 
here we just need to hook up our new class add to cart view so that Django can then produce the endpoint so the URL pattern here we're going to use add and then we need to add that to our main URLs so in core URLs let's go ahead and hook that up so we're gonna have a prefix of API slash cart and then add for our new endpoint so now when we go over to our docs localhost colon 8000 slash docs we now have our new endpoint add so let's give this a go now we don't have any parameters at the moment so we can't pass any parameters in so back in the cart view we're going to need to bring in the extend schema for us to add some additional information for the swagger ui to present and allow us to input to post to this endpoint uh, so let's go ahead and extend the schema so here we're going to use the extend schema and supply the add to cart serializer specify some responses 200 or none and a description if you prefer so with that additional information when we refresh our endpoint we can now see that we have a request body which we can now try out so if we go ahead and try this out so let's go for product id1 a string name let's call this test uh, price one quantity one let's execute so we can see that that was successful we get a 200 response and added to cart so let's see what that looks like in our redis database so localhost 5540 uh, that's uh, understood let's submit that and we need to add our connection again so i will quickly do that so the host just needs the host just needs to be changed to the name of the container so let's go for redis db let's add to the database so the database has now been added let's take a look so this is the new hash we've created you can see we have cart colon and then it looks like some sort of session id and this is what the data then looks like field one the value with our product details and we haven't set a ttl just yet so let's take a look under the hood so press f12 on mac fn f12 and that will bring up the admin tools here in chrome uh, let's go over to application and then cookies and we can now see that there is a session id provided and by default that's going to last around about two weeks let's change the data back in our request body here let's go for a product two this time and we leave the rest the same because we've got a different product id so that is what's going to be unique to allow us to add a new product so when we execute this now i've selected the network tab here so i can then have a look at the request that was sent so if i move down we can see that in the request headers so the data that was sent to the server you can see the cookie here and then inside the cookie this is the data that was sent to the server and one of the items was the session id so where at first we didn't have a session id we created one and now of course in the second request we already had it so that was used and passed in and used to create more data so let's take a look now at reddit so we do a refresh we should have two items now and there we go so what we're looking at here then is one hash for one user so cart colon and then the session id so that's the key we're using for our hash and we can now see we have two fields field one and two which represents two products in the shopping cart so i apologize if that explanation was a little bit too slow and i also apologize if it was a little bit too quick as we start to move through the course things will naturally speed up i will try to avoid repeating anything that i have previously explained unless i think there's something that might need a little bit of a recap so we've now created our first redis interaction adding products to our redis database we created a django view and drf endpoint to handle the add to cart actions and we've associated our cart data with session ids to persist cart items for anonymous or logged in users of course if you were already logged into the django admin site you would have already created a session id and that would have already been 
created in your browser and used when you created the initial request to add products to your cart 